What's up guys? Welcome back to another pottery video. Today our video is with one of my favorite people, Kurt Hammerly from Hammerly Ceramics. If you don't follow him on Instagram, he does some amazing work. 3D prints, molds, uh, his glass fired cone 10 glazes are amazing. And just his story of how he uh, had an accident and was near death and then quit his job to start doing ceramics and now he's making a huge impact in the ceramic world. So I got to sit down with Kurt at Inseca and talk to him about kind of what led up to him gaining so many Instagram followers, what his plans are for the future. Um, he was just a super cool guy. The conversation we were having was like 30 minutes before he actually went in front of hundreds of people and gave a talk about how to build a brand on Instagram and how to grow your following on Instagram. I would encourage you to seek out Kurt Hammerly at Hammerly Ceramics on Instagram. Uh, check out his work. He does some amazing stuff and he's definitely an idol of mine. Um, someone I look up to in terms of building a brand and how to go at making a living full-time ceramics. Without further ado, here's the interview with Kurt Hammerly. everywhere we're recording uh, there's been <laughs> there's been quite a few people I have I have buttons and stickers I really wanted to do that uh, I saw some other potters doing it yeah I saw I got stickers because you gave you gave cool. out stickers I was like hey, man. do you have a button there have been good. there have been quite a few mostly kids yeah yeah just run up had one that was like Kurt screaming Emily. and I was like oh my god why are you screaming <laughs> uh, but for the most part everyone is really everyone's really chill do you feel like a celebrity here I don't know what a celebrity feels like well I think I I'm gonna speak for you and say that you're a celebrity here okay here in this, and in so this how you microcosm feel, yeah, yeah 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 there's Lori you know Lori yeah 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 um, well, if you guys don't know Kurt Hammerly, I've talked about him before on the YouTube channel. Can you see me? Yeah, we can see me. Yeah, you're he there. does amazing, amazing <clears throat> stuff. Gas fired, 3D printed molds, all that stuff. It's awesome. Yeah. New studio's coming. New studio's coming. The city's fighting me. The Blau is scheduled to be delivered in about, what, a week? That's I think so it's a exciting. week. Got an email this morning from my customs broker. Yeah. It's so insane. I, I quit my job to become an artist, and last week, for Nsika, I was just looking at what I was doing and I'm like, I'm getting city permits and I'm working yeah. on lease yeah. agreements and I have a customs broker and I have a general contractor. And I'm like, this is just, I quit my job to play with mud and now I'm doing all this other crazy stuff. But I'm really hoping that in two, three months, settled into the new studio, new kiln is up and running and I can really hit the ground running, get all of my um, systems in place for the holiday season, mm -hmm. and then really blow it out of the water. That's awesome. In the for the holidays. So is your plan, and this is just from a like personal I want to know, is your plan to keep doing Etsy restocks, where you do the live and load on Instagram, yeah. and then do the Etsy restock? This is something that I've thought a lot about. I'm still going to do one of those a month. That's okay. like a live unloading. That's the more experimental kiln, where it has hundred different pieces yeah, yeah. with different glazes. Then, um, the idea is I don't want to saturate the market with that because I want it to be this once a month thing where I do the live unloading, yep. the before and after picture, the new stuff, and then what I'm going to do on top of that is I am going to pick uh, glaze of the month and do pre-orders. Okay, so cool. that glaze combination great, yeah. will go on every single piece, uh, every single design that I make. Yep. Uh, at the very first day of the month, I will put up um, orders for those glaze of the month pieces. And after three weeks, I'll close them. I'll have all the bisqueware ready to go. And then I'll take those final numbers, add a couple on for safety, yep. and then make an entire kiln or however much that I need to do with that glaze of the month pieces. And then um, on top of that, I want to, oh, I get a lot of requests for custom things yeah, yeah. because I use so many glaze combinations that um, it can go months before I get back to one that people right. missed. Right, right. Uh, so I'm gonna, I haven't decided the number, it might be four, might be six, but if you want four or six things, 
custom glazes, I will take that custom order. Um, probably elephants, I'll just yeah, do yeah. like a one-off. Like, yeah. hey, if you want certain glaze combination on an elephant, let me know and I'll yeah. make that custom for you. So those are really gonna be the three things. The um, kind of experimental kiln, before and after shots, live unloading, that's gonna stay the same. Then glaze of the month and uh, custom orders. And that's what I'm trying to run through for the end of 2019. Yeah. And see. Look at those plans. See how it works. You're such a planner, man. Oh yeah. I think That's of awesome. a. I'm picking up a pretty expensive uh, lease, so I have to. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. have to figure out um, where that money's going to come from. The, the really uh, thing that's up in the air is I have no idea where the sales capacity ends right, online. Right. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I keep the sales keep selling out. Um, if I double my production, is it still going to happen? Right, right. If I double my production, am I going to be sitting there with 50 pieces online and no one's buying them, and then the next month comes around and I put more up and no one's buying? I don't know how yeah, that's going to yeah. work. Yeah. Uh, there's always, uh, I turn down every wholesale order that comes my way right now just because I don't have the capacity for it. Um, but would you do it? Would you do wholesale when you have the, because you will have the capacity? Yes, and that's going to be dependent on numbers. I want to get more work on Etsy because 98% of the time I'm sold out. Right. So I want to have the capacity. I, I don't know, this makes me seem, I don't, I don't know. A lot of people are in a situation where they wish that they were in my situation. Yeah. But this situation is also frustrating because people are basically coming to me with money in their hand right. and they're saying, I want your thing. Yeah. And I'm saying no. Right. <laughs> and. I, I understand I'm super fortunate for that, yeah. but it's still really hard Yeah, because yeah. I'm trying to run a business, I'm trying to grow it, paid for the kiln cash, um, paying for the studio renovations. I've been saving for years for yeah, this. Right, right. And telling people no when they're trying to hand me money. Yeah, is a, yeah, it's it's tough. A, something that I just don't know how to wrap my head around. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, very fortunate situation. Yeah, yeah. And, That's yeah. awesome. So how about how about Encika? How do you what do you feel? Is how many times have you been in Encika? So this is my second Encika. The first one was in Pittsburgh last year. I was so I'm sure you're in the situation yeah. right now. I was so overwhelmed. Oh yeah. I missed 80% of the programming. Yeah. Yeah. This year, I mean, I still missed 80% of the programming. Yeah. Uh, I've gone to talks by friends, panels by friends. Uh, went to um, Paul Blaze's event yep. last night, uh, yeah. had fun with that. Uh, went to a couple room shows at, for Companion Gallery and for Clay by the Bay. But there's too much to do. Yeah. You're never going to be able yeah. to do it all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I have so much fun. I love meeting up with, I spend a lot of my time talking to people on Instagram. Yep talking to the other people that are in similar situations. Talk to um, Valerian, uh, Valeri and Sean from Forest Ceramico. Yep. I talked to Maya from Melissa Maya Pottery. I talked to Kate from um, Dadal Goods. I talked to all these people on Instagram and don't meet them, don't see them. Last year I met Sean and Valerian. It was yeah. just absolutely amazing. This year met so many more people because I did a room show and um, I've been on Instagram longer now. Yeah. So I come here for meeting the people. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just fantastic. I love going down to the to the main hall. I love seeing Eutectics, uh, the Eutectic Gallery. I'm gonna try to see if they're interested in my work. Yeah. We we drove out here, my wife and I drove out here this year, and we hauled all the work with us, not doing that in Richmond. Yeah, yeah, right, that's, uh, a, that's so, a haul. Uh, and I've been getting people messaging me the entire time that we're here, like, hey, where can I see your work? Yeah. And I'm like, I did a room show for two hours, but yeah. my work isn't on display anywhere here. Right, right. Um, so next year, I really wanna have work on display, with a gallery, that'd yeah. be really fantastic. Uh, take a lot off my plate. Setting up for that room show was um, was a lot. Yeah. And then I'm speaking here in about an hour, so <laughs> I really wish I would have been speaking on Wednesday yeah. or Thursday, probably Thursday. Yeah. Because now I'm speaking at the very end of the day, Friday, and uh, I just want it to be over with in a way. <laughs> yeah. So I can stop thinking about it. Uh, last night we were out at a bar until like midnight with all the other Instagram people and I was like, I should leave. Yeah, yeah. I should really get to sleep because uh, I have to speak tomorrow. Yeah, right, right, right. So, I love it. I think it's great. I plan on continuing to come. Uh, next year is Richmond, Virginia. The year after that is Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. Yeah. Um, I wish they'd bring it to Denver. Yeah, Denver. Maybe in a spot. couple years. My studio is really well established. I'd love to 
get on one of the bus tour stops or just have people come from. Do you have plans for a retail space in your studio? Yeah. Like you're going to sell out of there too? Yeah. So, um, my space is 1,400 square feet. It is actually in a um, strip mall yeah. in the suburbs of Denver in a town called Westminster where I live. Um, in Colorado, finding industrial space is almost impossible. Yeah. Marijuana, beer brewing, and now liquor distilling is yeah. a thing yeah. that's legal. So all the industrial space is snatched up by those three. So the industrial space that's still available is super expensive. Yeah. So I found a retail space with a storefront in a strip mall for cheaper than industrial space. Wow. I have a bunch of south facing windows, it's along a busy street. I can't imagine I'm gonna get that much foot traffic. I right, think I'm gonna have right. to drive local stuff through events, but I will, it'll be a working studio, and then in the front right corner, as you're looking in, is gonna be probably a 12 by 15 um, gallery space. Cool. And at first it's just gonna be my work. I have this idea that I wanna feature other artists um, in the gallery for yeah. like a month at a time. Like I said, I really think that it's going to be bringing people in for events. Yeah. Like, yeah. hey, we're gonna we're gonna unload an absolutely experimental kiln, um, all brand new glazes. Come on in, come see what we got. We're gonna be grilling. Uh, you can throw on the wheels if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we might even have like music at some point. I, I don't know what it'll be. I yeah. don't know how many people I can actually get to show up to those. But I think that doing events like that will be more awesome than just being open every day of the week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that'll be hard since it's just me right now anyway. Right, right, right. So I'm gonna have a couple days that I'm guaranteed to be in the shop. Yeah. And those are our hours, like Tuesday and Saturday. Um, but other than that, it'll be uh, by appointment. Have you met Tim? I have not met Tim. Oh, shit, I see him on, on Instagram, the, but... Now he's on the... Yeah, yeah. Escalator. He is the nicest guy. Yeah. I, I've, I've watched you guys do your lives together on Instagram, yeah. and that's very entertaining. Yeah. We have a good time. He, um, Paul Blaze wanted us to do, uh, like, a pot inform, uh, impromptu Potter's Cast this morning. Oh, yeah. And Tim's like, I... I have too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I should have said no, but I, I'm really bad. I say yes to everything because yeah, yeah. I Ooh. love engaging. Hey, but, yeah. I appreciate you taking the time, talking Absolutely. about your studio, talking about Absolutely. It's great to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Great to meet Thanks, you. Man. How's your Insika going? Uh, it's been fun. I love people, and so I love being around. I love watching him light up, so yeah. that's the other part of this. So he amazes me every single day, so it's super awesome to just come and be a part of it. He came last year, and I... I have a hard time. I don't like to miss out. Yeah. But I also, like I said, I think my favorite thing is to watch him light up and be in his element and have everybody kind of appreciate for what he's doing. Because sometimes it's only feels like our little world right. is just me. And I'm like, oh, you're so good. And yeah. then I come here and I'm like, oh, wait, you have a whole other fan base. I'm yeah. still number one. Yeah, still yeah, number yeah. One yeah. Fan. Obviously. It's been fun. Yeah. I've been having a great time. Awesome. And I usually love to unload. I usually I pack up everything, make sure it's all safe. I pick out mine that I'm going to steal yeah, that yeah. no one gets to buy, yeah. so that's pretty fun. That is cool. Yeah. So that was it, guys. That was the interview. Look where we are right now. We are getting so close to being in the studio. So exciting. Shout out to Kurt. I seriously can't say enough good things about his work and just him as a person. If you haven't already, hit subscribe, like, comment, share this video with anybody you know. So close to being done with this studio. We'll see you in the next video. That's what I like to call skimboarding in Minnesota.